In the following video, I'm going to show you the answers to the AQA Maths Unit 2 June 2011 paper. Just before I do, this was regarded as quite a difficult paper, um, so there are some uh, interesting parts here, but there are a lot of easy marks to pick up. So do work through it as I work through it, and make sure you understand each question. Okay, here we go. Question 1. Given that D is 6, F is negative 12, work out the value of that expression. This is what's called a simple substitution question. The topic we're dealing with is substitution here. All we've got to do is substitute in our D and our F, be very careful with our negatives, and work out the correct answer. Okay, let's do it. 9. D has value 6, so that's 6 subtract 10, and that's all divided by minus 12. Okay, well, 6 minus 10 is negative 4, so the top is actually 9 multiplied by negative 4, all over negative 12. Well, 9 times 4 is 36, so 9 times negative 4 is negative 36, all over negative 12. And negative 36 divided by negative 12 is 3. A negative divided by a negative gives you a positive. So the answer is 3. Really should be getting that question 100% correct. Question 2. This is an approximations question. Approximations are to do with estimating the answer, not working it out entirely accurately, working it out um, so that uh, it's approximately correct. What you do for these is every number you see, you round to one significant figure. What that means is, you look from the right as you approach the number. The first non-zero number, decide what column that's in. It's in the hundreds. So round 795.4 to the nearest hundred. The nearest hundred to that is obviously 800. All of this is divided by well, let's round each of the remaining terms. You look at the 2.1. The first non-zero term is a 2. That's in the units column. So we want to round 2.1 to the nearest unit, which is 2. So we would have 2 squared. And we look at the 9. It's in the units column. The nearest unit to 9.8 is 10. We would have something that looks like that. Well, we've still got 800 on the top. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 10 is 40, so this would be 800 over 40, which simplifies to 20. And the answer you should have got there was 20. Very, very straightforward. You must get these questions right. Question 3. This talks about the sale of digital cameras in two different shops. In the shop clicks, the normal price is £210 and you get 40% off. In the shop snaps, the normal price is £195 and you get one third off. Which shop is cheaper? You must show you're working. You must at the very end state which of the shops is cheaper. There is a mark for that, so do not forget that. Okay, let's have a go. Let's right click, let's work out how much that costs first. Well, I want 40%. Of 210. So why don't I start by easily calculating 10% of 210, which is clearly 21 pounds. So therefore 40% of 210 must be 4 lots of 21, which is 84 pounds. So then I would write the sale price, the sale price must equal 210 subtract 84, which is equal to 126 pounds. Now let's work for schnapps. Okay, so we want to work out what a, th a third of 195 is. We want a third of 195. That means the same thing as 195 divided by 3. Well, the answer to 195 divided by 3, let's see, let's see if we can break it down. 150 divided by 3 is 50, and the remaining 45 divided by 3 is 15. 
So 195 divided by 3 must be equal to £65. So the sale price is equal to 195 take away 65 which is equal to £130. So, remember the question asked you which shop has the cheapest sale price, so you must state that. Therefore, clicks is cheaper by £4. Okay, very straightforward. Again, you should be getting full marks on this type of question. No reason to make mistakes on this type of question. Okay, moving on. Right, there's a bag with red, blue and yellow counters. Red plus blue plus yellow. There are three times as many blue counters as yellow counters. There are 43 counters in the bag. Some red counters are added to the bag. There are now 50 counters in the bag. If there were 43 counters in the bag before, some reds have been added and now there are 50. To get one easy mark, you could say that the the number of reds added, reds added, must be equal to 50, subtract 43, which is 7 new reds. So 7 new reds in the, in the bag now. It says the number of reds has doubled. So, if there are 7 new ones in there, there must have been 7 ones in there before for it to have doubled. So the number of reds before must equal 7 old reds so that now there are 14 reds in total okay let's see if we can use that information there are 50 counters in the bag so and 14 of them are red now so 50 subtract 14 is equal to 36 there are 36 counters now in the bag but we know there are two times as many blues, so the ratio of blue to yellow is, sorry, 3 to 1. So we have to divide 36 in the ratio 3 to 1. So we do 36 divided by how many parts are there? There are four parts in total, so each part is worth 9. So therefore, in the ratio 3 to 1, we would have 27 to 9. The question asks us how many yellow counters in the bag, so the yellow counters is 9 and we write down nine yellow counters. Again, really should be getting this type of question right. If you read the question slowly, think carefully, you should very well be able to do this question. Okay, moving on again. Solving a linear equation here. We have seven x's on the left-hand side equals 15 take away three x. It's a linear equation because the power of x is just one. So we use simple balancing methods to solve. Let's add 3x to both sides. That will get rid of this negative 3x here and give us 10x on this side is equal to 15. Now we divide both sides by 10, so we get x is equal to 1.5. And we write 1.5 here as our answer. Very, very easy. Now, 5b. It says that this expression here simplifies to this and it wants you to work out A and B. Now, it may confuse you. You may think, where do A and B come from? Basically, this question, in a roundabout way, is asking you to expand the brackets here, collect like terms, simplify, and you will see it looks something like this expression over here, and then you can read off your values of A and B. Okay, let's have a go. Expanding brackets. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times positive 16 is positive 32. Positive 4 times x is plus 4x. Positive 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. Now let's collect like terms. 2x plus 4x is 6x. And 32 take away 20 is equal to 8. Sorry, is equal to 12. So we have plus 12. It's not quite in the form we want it to be. We want x in brackets. So this here, we must have to factorise out a common factor. What goes into 6x and 12? Well, 6 does. So you factorise out 6 and you're left with x plus 
2 inside the brackets. What's A? Well, A is the number outside the bracket, so A is 6. B is the number inside the bracket, so B is equal to 2. Once again, maybe a slight trick in the way they've worded it, so hopefully you can spot this wording in future, but very, very straightforward question. If you had just followed your nose there, simplified and collected like terms, you would have easily found the answer. Okay, continuing onwards. Okay, this question may have seemed quite complicated, but if you extracted the information uh, sensibly from this question, you would have found it wasn't too bad. Let's have a go. It says, Amy, Ben, Colleen and Dave share some money. Amy, Ben, Colleen and Dave. Amy has a six. Ben has a fifth. The difference between Amy and Ben's share is added to Colleen's share. The answer is equal to half the money. Show that Amy and Dave each have the same amount of money. We want to show that A and D have the same portion of the total amount. Okay, let's start off with this first fact here, fact one. The difference between Amy and Ben's share is added to Colleen's share. Difference in maths means take away. The difference between a fifth and a sixth, a fifth being the bigger fraction. A fifth, take away a sixth. What's that? If adding or subtracting fractions is your aim, make the bottom numbers the same. Five and six go into 30. And we've got a subtraction. This number here must therefore be six. This number here must be five. You subtract them and you get a 30, one over 30. Now that amount is added to Colleen's share and you get half the money. Well, what would half of 30 be? It would be 15 out of 30. So half, uh, the, new, the answer, this answer must equal 15 out of 30 once 1 over 30 has been added. So Colleen before must have had 14 out of 30. Okay, she must have had 14 out of 30. So Colleen had 14 out of 30. Okay, well, what does that leave Dave with? Well, let's remember, um, Ben had one fifth, which was the same as 6 out of 30. Amy had a six, which was the same as 5 out of 30. Colleen had 14 out of 30. So adding those together, we get... 25 out of 30. Therefore, Dave must have the remaining 5 out of 30. So, we can therefore say that Amy's share equals 5 out of 30. Dave's share equals 5 out of 30. So, they have the same amount as required. Again, keeping your wits about you, there was nothing hard about this question. You just have to be careful extracting the data. Okay, moving on. 